Yeah, baby, we want to talk about something real important today. How to do your compost. Yeah, baby, how you gotta know how to do your compost. You gotta know how to do your compost correctly. Otherwise, you could get worms. Now, let me tell you what's going on here, worms. Now, let me tell you what's going on here, folks. I want to talk about the newest sensation going across the United States. This state, this compost. Now, there's several things going on here. Now, we come from a long family of uh, German Lutherans who taught us how to do this. So, we know how to do it. Now, you're going to need a couple tools. You need a couple tools here, which we have around. And we have the do's and the don'ts, Okay. Now we have some ordinary kitchen compost in there. You got a hamburger, some eggs, some other stuff. I don't know what it is. Some other stuff. Ah, department store stuff. Department store stuff. Now you're going to need a couple tools. You're going to need a trowel, and you're going to need one of these. Believe me, baby, you're going to need one of these. Because my grandpa, he told me, he said back in the continent, he said, seven out of ten divorces weren't over money. They were over the compost pile. So don't forget, you're going to need one of these. Okay, let's get started here, kids. Now, I have started a new compost pile. Now, I don't know if you can see it because I have it purposely out of the direct sunlight. It consists mostly of bamboo and a couple hamburgers. I don't know if you can see it, but it's nicely out of the way of everything. And most importantly, it's not near trees or property lines. Very, very, very important. Do not want certified mail coming from your... Neighbor's attorney saying your compost pile is encroaching on my property. Also, you do not want the compost near the trees because, like I said, it's got worms. Now, there's some things you can put into a compost pile. As we said the afore, it's got worms. Now, there's some things you can put into a compost pile. As we said the afore, I mentioned normal kitchen stuff, we'll call it right now. And we got hamburgers. You can throw hamburgers. You can throw a hamburger in there. That was plenty good. Now, one thing I know that I got, that I did get a little help from a, a company called Wonderland Gardens. Now, they emailed me this morning. They said one thing that's uh, very, very, very bad for your compost is uh, stuff from the 70s. Now, this is uh, pressure-treated wood, also painted. Now, it's pressure-treated. They got more chemicals in here to kill the whole freaking German army in World War II. Mostly, it's uh, cyanide and arsenic, I believe. So, you do not want to throw one of these in there. Because you might poison the whole freaking earth. Bad news, bad news, bad news. Now, the other thing is an extremely good book. The Discoverers, that's good, but I don't recommend... The Discoverers, that's good, but I don't recommend throwing that in there either, you know? Now, we got another book that's a little bit different. It's called Seth Speaks. It's pretty good. So, we're not going to throw it in. Now, you got paper towels, which are always good for cleaning your hands. You need lots and lots and lots of these, because like I said... You want to make sure you got your work clothes on. Now, other things that do not go into a compost pile, that do not go into a compost pile, will be something like a mannequin, because you don't know quite what it's made out of, okay? So we'll just put Mr. Mannequin over here. But I tell you what they do, do work real good. They hold toilet paper and stuff like that. Nice, nice little design and trick I got. Now, here you got your ordinary kitchen table. Now... Most likely wood, so no, 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 no. So it's not going to the compost pile. Also, another big no. As you can see, this is a big no. As you can see, this is red. This is very, very, very bad to put into the compost pile. I don't care what kind of wood it's made out of. Even if it's cardboard. It ain't going in because it's red. It might be socialist or something like that. Now, a dictionary under no circumstances should go into a compost pile. And the other common mistake, chairs, chairs, chairs. Never put a chair in a compost pile. But as you can see, we have, but as you can see, we have it well organized. I don't know if we can pan over here and see the tree and the compost pile. I recommend three meters. And another one I learned from my father, who was not Lutheran, no matter how bad your golf game is, he used to always throw his clubs into the compost pile. I don't know why. I didn't know why until I got older. Because his golf game sucked. It ain't my problem. It ain't the compost. Now, if you come on over here. 
I'll tell you a couple things you don't want to do. You don't want to take stuff that you just, just because you don't like it, you just don't throw it into the compost pile. Now, would I take your bicycle and throw it into the compost pile because I don't like it? No, I would take your bicycle and talk to you about it, you know? Like I said, in the old country, this is what causes divorce. So anyway, get the wood. And the other important thing. So anyway, get the wood. And the other important thing is, a lot of people don't realize. I got 40 years professional experience doing this. Including working with my grandpa, I got 50 years of professional experience working with compost and natural things. One thing you don't want to do, you don't want to ever cover a base of a tree, make a garden or such, fill the, the tree around the tree with dirt or compost or even cement. But a lot of people think to make a nice little tidy little garden, you know, so you get some uh, 2 by 12 build a little box around the tree, plant some flowers. Well, I tell you, a little box around the tree. Plant some flowers. Well, I tell you, it looks really, really groovy for that summer. But I tell you, as you go up the tree, crawling insects that are the tree's not used to, go into the base of the tree, and then within 10 years, count them, 10 years, the tree's going to die. Now, that's going to cost the homeowner about $3,000 to get the freaking tree cut down. Now, the renters don't have to worry about that because they're gone. They're probably back in Lithuania. As you can see, there's people from Lithuania. Also, it's good to have a cat, but just one. That's it, okay? I did my duty. It's like, you know, getting drafted. Now, here's the man with the golf club. Now, he taught me everything I knew about golf. I tell you, I got one hell of a slice. Okay, so let's repeat what we know. We got a new compost pile going over here. So let's repeat what we know. We got a new compost pile going over here at the south end of the property, because this is a new thing happening all across suburban America. Also, if you're lucky enough to have a nice little small property in one of the small rural cities of America, you might be considering doing the same thing. So don't make the mistakes that have been happening here, you know? Get it over there, out of the way, make sure you cooperate with the property. Now, unfortunately, a lot of houses produce more compost than the property can take in. So, you got a problem on that one, maybe check your internet or maybe Wonderland Gardens. Hang on a second. Yeah, wait, yeah, we'll be there. We gotta go to lunch soon, okay? Okay. Let's cut that short, okay. Anyway, let's wrap this up. So, like I said, the most important thing is have the proper clothes on. Make sure you do it in the proper place, okay? Last year I tried doing it in the basement. Didn't seem like a bad idea. But check this out. I mean, you see it? Those are compost worm bites. Hurt like we're freaking hell. The doctor says ain't much you can do about it, so... I think we pretty much got it a wrap. Hang on. Hines, look at it. I told you I'd be there, okay? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah I went to the bank. Now, let's go. Man, you won't believe who I saw at the bank, too. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. So it looks like I'm wrong. Yeah. Well, what do you expect? You know? But, you know, you know. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about it later, okay? Gotta get, get a wrap up on this, okay? PBS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It should be on. Okay. See ya. Sorry. Okay. Well, I think of... Uh, there's no questions, I don't think, other than to have the proper tools. Make sure you got, you know, if you need a tape measure. But I think of... There's no questions, I don't think, other than to have the proper tools. Make sure you got, you know, if you need a tape measure. Me, I just kind of use my arms like this. So, you know, make sure you're this far away from a tree. You're this far away from a tree. Now, you probably can't see it, but the property's been marked. That's the edge of the property over there. The compost pile was over into the neighbor's property. That's a, a real big problem. Also, it's right against the tree. You can see the little ants going around. Now, the compost is working, but what it's doing, it's killing a 400-year-old tree, which is really kind of bad news. So, unfortunately, nature so unfortunately nature has its good and bad, and, and you got to pick your fight, okay? So... My choice is I don't want to kill a 400-year-old tree that's going to cost me thousands of dollars to get taken down and hauled away. Where to compost really sensibly with anybody with, you know, put it over there. You know, and the whole idea of throwing it behind a tree just because you can't see it, that's not really using your noggin, as my dad would say. Okay, so if you need another picture of my father, he's the one that taught me everything, like how to change locks, 
I had to swing a golf club. I had to drink. Which I haven't been drinking for quite a few years. And also, I'm uh, having a problem. I'm uh, slurring my speech, but I think it's uh, that disease the doctor can't figure out. But it's also what my father had. Okay, hang on. Yeah. Okay, yeah, no, no, we got it together. Okay. I'll see you on. Okay. Love you too. Okay. Get it together. Okay. I'll, I'll see you on. Okay. Love you too. Okay, well, that about wraps it up for Vinny's uh, compost pile lesson. Um, if there's any questions, just write me. I'll be glad to help you. I'll be glad to help you out with whatever you got. Once again, want to th uh, thank my uh, Lutheran grandfather for making me work when I was about four years old with a pitchfork, which I ain't got one out here now, but his compost pile. Worked out real good. He grew the third largest tomato in Indiana one year. Okay, so the guy obviously knew what he was doing. He wasn't an amateur, and that's many, many generations coming down verbally past the story of the compost pile and how not to get divorced. Okay, with this session, I would like to do my interpretation of the or ornate Coleman. See, that's the slurring of the speech. It's multiple sclerosis. Anyway, here we go. So the end of the show. Here we go. So the end of the show. And I guess the moral of the story is even human beings become compost.